Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I am the one they call Jake, the reader of questions. And this is Ask Hugo number 34. I tried, I tried to make my title sound more important to this type of episode. Yeah, I I commend you for an attempt. Uh, <laughs> you want to do some Hugo Beard Watch since I'm doing the No Shave November? Let's do it. Hugo Beard Watch. What's it look like? Get real close. Okay, here we go. Do, do we have any sort of... like? Well, what's the sound on the scruff? Because here's mine. And actually, I just trimmed because I, I hate prostates. Okay, here's, here's my <laughs> noise, I guess. I hear nothing. Yeah, it's it's it's. I have my uh, facial hair on silence. So if you get close, <laughs> you can start to see some some growth. Like uh, <laughs> like if I was Armenian, but also in the fifth grade a little bit. So. <laughs> uh, you you said you said you had your uh, beard on on silent, implying that there's a vibrate setting, mm-hmm. which means that you are like your cunnilingus game is. A number one. Yeah, yeah. Ladies. Good, good, for, good for you. Oh, that's more like kind of chingus. <laughs> that's, don't laugh at my pun. That was an accidental pun. Fuck you. No, fuck you for enabling that. Anyway, enough for Hugo Beard Watch. If you guys don't know, I'm doing the No Shave November thing, and everyone in the comments is like, Hugo, you got a baby face. Shave a beard. Or shave a beard. Shave a beard. Grow a beard. Well, he won't be able to, because it will never grow big enough. Yeah, so we'll see what happens by the end of the month. Anyway, here are the questions. Noah Stavish says, Dear Hugo or Jake, I've been thinking about something a bit controversial. Why not allow Daesh to form a micro-Islamic state in the Middle East like they desire? Work with a couple of countries in the area to give them a single large city, not a major city like Mosul or Aleppo, but something large enough to see on Google Maps like al Mayadeen in Syria, okay? Google Maps is is the barometer uh, to which we hold all cities. <laughs> There'd be restrictions on them, their people in trade, and would give the opportunity to allow their version of Sharia law to flourish like so many people desire. No refugees would be taken from this, the country, and travel would be limited for many years until they prove themselves to not be as evil as the world thinks, rightfully so, they are. If any terror attacks happen anywhere in the world that can be linked at all to them, the countries would be destroyed, leaders killed, civilians jailed until they are deemed to be to reintegrate into society and the land would go back to Syria having much having such a small area would also make it easier for an alliance of Syria, Iraq, Russia, Europe and the US to monitor all activity uh TLDR uh proposing an Islam as an Islamic state easy to watch enemies easy to destroy may help and terrorism make stupid people happy wow this is uh <laughs> I know that's why I picked it this is some. Um, have you have you considered putting this through literally any other lens before you typed it out, Noah? Um, I'm just gonna put this out there. I hope you never find your way into any sector of the government. I don't want you writing parking tickets for people. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to be mean, but honestly, this plan is terrible. This would never work for a myriad of reasons. I can think of at least two off the top of my head right now. For one, one of the reasons that Islamic State is so terrible is because of the way they treat their people, whether or not they want to be in the area. Uh, and that's one of the reasons people fight them is because they treat women like shit, even by Middle Eastern standards, which says a lot. Uh, they treat people who don't want, don't believe in their hardline Islamic stance. They treat them like shit or murder them. So that's why they're being fought off, because on an ideological and humanitarian level, we don't want that stuff to continue. Secondly, even if in some hypothetical universe this happened, let's say Donald Trump gets elected president and he reads this comment by happenstance and says, yes, this is a great idea, and luckily for you, Noah, he will make you some sort of chief advisor on his administration, uh, and based around the people he puts around himself, you will be the most qualified. So what's going to happen is... They won't want to do that because what ISIS wants, they don't just want their own little city that they can all live in and be happy and hate gays and women and all that. They would like to spread their ideology further, like, until it is everywhere, which of course would never happen, but they don't care. They just want to spread this as far as they can and have control over things and uh, rule over it in a hardline Islamic way. If you tried to put them in one little city, immediately they'd be like, um... 
no and leave and continue to do what they are now. I'm also curious how you think you're going to herd all ISIS members into one city. There are a lot of people who sympathize and are ISIS members. I think you underestimate a little bit, which is unfortunate, but it is Right, do you think they're just, like, uh, we can agree that they're the foundation of their belief and the belief itself is stupid, but they're not literally cattle. Like, you, you can't just push them into a spot and go, oh, no, it's cool, and for them to not see through that. They view us as a threat already. This is so impractical and and just it has no ethical basis whatsoever. It's just... Is ridiculous. You're basically saying, okay, let's put them in this farm situation so that if they, if the, it breaks out or whatever, it goes wrong, we can just bomb them into oblivion all at once. That's not going to work, man. They're I, people that exist. They have social media too. Like, they talk to each other. Do you, I, you're so detached from the fact that they are also human beings. That it just it just doesn't register to me. Uh, also, you say that if there was like one terrorist attack linked to them anywhere in the world, you would kill every single person there. I hate. Uh, ISIS, no, obviously. the civilians would be jailed, sir. Oh, the civilians would be jailed. I'd like to see how that would work. Hold on, guys, let us go in. We gotta grab all the civilians before we bomb you to death. Okay? Can you guys just wait five minutes while we <laughs> grab all the civilians? It just <laughs> <laughs> this makes sense in like a. Uh... Like, if it was, like, a neighborhood of people, I think that that's doable and very wrong, but still doable. But a but an ethnic group and a religious base? Nah, you're, it's not, that's not, that's dumb. No, that's dumb. Think, think through this. How would you define who is, I mean, I get it if there's people who obviously will say, oh, know. yes, I'm with ISIS, but how do you determine, you can't, <laughs> you can't bomb an ideology to death, you just can't. Uh, it's so much more complex than that. And I, I don't mean to be mean, Noah, but that's a really bad plan. That's a really bad plan. Homer Cooper says, Dearest Hugo and Jake. It's like an old friend. I wish you would have written this in quill pen, though. It just feels impersonal now. What are your thoughts on churches indirectly supporting a presidential candidate? A local church did a sermon on voting. During this, he read from a biased pamphlet comparing Republicans to Democrats when it comes to God's word, or at least the pamphlet's version of it. Uh, I could tell he was being very careful not to say one over the other, and then there is a link. If you are interested, you can type that in yourself. But I know you lazy fucks won't do it. <laughs> well, technically, uh, supporting any presidential candidate if or any candidate for any office in the government is illegal if you're a tax exempted church which is pretty much every church um they're not a normal nonprofit in the sense that they don't actually have to report their earnings at all to the government which is bullshit even if you're going to make churches nonprofits for one reason or another there are arguments for or against that uh they should still be treated like a normal nonprofit but they aren't but anyway part of that and part of them being a nonprofit that doesn't have to report their uh income to the government is the fact that they agree not to get involved in the political process, at least not actively. This happened, I forget exactly when this happened, but it was basically the Republicans, I think it was the Republicans, might have been the Democrats, but it was probably the Republicans, um, trying to gather up a, a, a evangelical Christian base. This might have been during the Southern strategy, actually. I don't totally remember. I could be wrong if I'm wrong. Call me out. Call me an idiot. Whatever. Um, but that was their concession was, okay, you're tax exempt and you don't have to report to the government, but churches, you can't get involved in the political process, wink, wink, wink. Um, and of course, it doesn't really pan out that way. Even now, there's an annual thing where churches <laughs> who are protesting this, which is total bullshit because they have like the best situation in the world they could possibly have here. You're tax exempt, don't have to report, just don't, don't you know, uh, talk about politics at the pulpit. But no, some churches have decided, uh, no, we're going to do it anyway, and we're going to send tapes of us doing it to the IRS just to be like, fuck you, IRS. Oh, man. If I was in charge of that shit, like, I would I would force an executive order through and be like, okay, remove their tax exemption for one year. At, at the very least, it's ridiculous. I don't know. No, one year every time you do it. The IRS. It's, like, I'll give it back to you after it sets 365 days later. I'm totally fine with that. The IRS is already understaffed as it is uh, and underfunded, yeah. so a lot of stuff gets through. This is why a lot of people get away with cheating on their taxes, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, I think it's bullshit. And the thing is, though, in theory, for one thing, blatant people don't even get punished. So, of course, the people who do it kind of wink, wink, 
not really mentioning a specific candidate, of course they're going to get away with it. It's not right, right, and even technically, if it actually went through the legal system and somehow ended up at the Supreme Court, uh, as as far as the law is actually concerned, they might not get away with it. But practically speaking, the law is not getting enforced. So it sucks, but it is what it is. But I'm going to be honest: if you're in a church that's going to be doing that anyway, you're probably not voting down ticket Democrat in the first place. So, eh. <laughs> It's, it's, well, a part of that, though, is the cycle of, of the practice of this, though. You know what I mean? In in part, but like, let's be real. The and Republicans there's, there's sta- some... Yeah, I know. I know what you're going to say. They, they they bank on the Christian base. But that said, like, there's some Democrats that do that as well, especially in the southern states. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying it's a it's strictly a partisan thing. I'm just saying out of right. the two parties, the Republicans are much more oh, prolific sure. at it, white Republicans, especially in evangelical areas. But yeah, especially black Southern churches, not necessarily. It just depends. Oh, yeah. But, it happens a lot. Uh, they had a big, a lot of Obama stuff uh, yeah. a few years ago, which I also disagreed with for the record, even though I was a supporter. Did you see recently, like, a, uh, I think it was a Southern black church recently got burned down and someone wrote, uh, vote Trump on it or something? That's terrible. I hope that wasn't actually a Trump supporter and more someone trying to frame it, but it, it would not surprise me if it is. Those people are like, there's there's some people, and I'm not going to say every single one of them. I can't imagine every single person that thinks Trump is fit to be president and is ideal is a bad person. I think they have different politics than I do. That's fine. But there's some people that are so fucking riled up about politics. It's so weird to me. Yeah, this, this happened the other day, too. I forget. I'll put maybe an, an article snippet on the screen because I forget the specifics. But basically, a guy shot a cop or something because uh, he was mad about uh, black people doing something. Oh, 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 it was it was them uh, sitting down during the national anthem. Oh, that's right. As a protest, which I don't even want to get into that. I find they have freedom of speech. Anyone can do whatever they want. And that is a protest they're allowed to do. Right. And I hate people. Who and if the NFL, and by the way, if the NFL wanted to discipline those players which they can't under the current uh, collective bargaining agreement but if they did want to that's their employer and would have the right to do so similar to uh the the duck dynasty shit that happened right um, although in their language in their agreement for that tv deal they did have the right to pull them from shit if they fucked up uh in the public eye so i mean as far as a person to person thing with the that whole situation i don't think that's a big deal at all Right. I think this guy think did though because you... he went off and shot a cop over it, and I don't know why. I don't know why he decided black people protesting the national anthem because of the current political climate and um, uh, him shooting a cop. I don't know how they're connected, but the guy the guy is a Trump <laughs> Trump the guy is a Trump supporter, obviously. Um, and I'm not again like Jake said. I'm not putting this on every Trump supporter, but like it's weird if you compare the fringe hardcore Democrat Hillary supporters, which I don't get either. I don't get how anyone's like, yeah, Hillary uh, Clinton, woo, right? It's so weird, like the uh, Lena Dunham's of the world, right? But the people who are like hardcore crazy Donald Trump supporters, woo, man, they are. Ooh, did you see the, uh, this was a couple weeks ago too. I'm surprised this didn't really make the news. I don't, this is so weird. I don't get why people say the media's biased towards Hillary. Some of it certainly is, but some stuff that happens doesn't get covered at all. Um, I'd say CNN is the one that's really egregious, but yeah. like Fox News exists. So yeah. how can we? Yeah. But, uh, there was a group, a militia group. I, you ever notice when it's like white right wing people doing terrorism, they're, it's a, militia. they're a militia and not terrorists. Anyway. It's so fucking... They yeah. were plotting to blow up a mosque like the day That's after terrorism. the election. That's terrorism. That's terrorism. Absolutely. I Ugh. agree. But they called them a militia. Uh, and they're obviously Trump supporters, too. I don't know. Something's going on in this country. It's not cool, man. It's uh, bad stuff's going to happen. And it's unfortunate. But hopefully, eh. I would like to think, and this is the idealist in me, which is a very small, small, tiny bit of me in the back of my brain that goes, hey, maybe it'll be okay. Um... I'm hoping that this election and how terrible and what a shit show it's been will be a learning experience for some people. And the next time the primaries come around, we get better candidates and people will get more involved with the political process. But the realist in me says, no, this is going to make people even more jaded towards the political process. And we're going to get even more crazy candidates next time. I don't Um, know about more crazy. Like, what could you possibly do to one-up this situation? uh, a, A person with the positions of Donald Trump that is also competent would be a big deal no that's not crazier though that's, that's more dangerous but well yeah but it's not crazier crazier would be like 
someone going up there and like David Duke being running for president Fair. and having a shot. You know like what? Someone at this that point, would, someone that would call people niggers and ki- kikes and all other sorts of shit, and people would be like, "Yeah, fucking yeah, racism." Woo! Honestly, like, I don't think Donald Trump is racist. I think a lot of his base could be. I think he's racist. I think I, he he might be racist, but it's in the, like the white collar sort of. Oh, we don't associate with blacks. Not the I'm gonna go lynch people. I like know. I don't think I don't think he would get excited about a lynching. I just don't think that he would rent to black people. You know what I'm saying? Like it's totally it's a different to- sort of racism where it's more of this classist issue rather than an actual race issue. Maybe, but at this point, if David Duke ran and won by the same people who, who supported Trump in the primaries, I wouldn't be shocked. Did you see his uh, thing the other day? He went on a tirade about not being able to finish a fucking. Um, it was, I think, it was he was running for Louisiana governor, and uh, they were doing a debate, and he just lost his fucking mind when a guy was trying to correct the the moderator was trying to correct the information in the question. And he was like, let me finish. Let me. And it went on for like two minutes. It was very cringy. No, I didn't see it. I, I try not to look at things with the name David Duke in them because it makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, South, if you want to secede again, maybe give it a shot. Maybe we'll let you go this time. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> Could be nonviolent. Anyways, uh, whether whoever you vote for, by the way, I don't care. Just make sure you go do it. So yeah, please go, go vote everywhere. Yeah. Even um, if it's for Trump, which I disagree with. It's ugh. still, I'd rather you voted for Trump than then bitched about a Hillary win and did nothing about it. Does that make sense? Like, uh, at its core, if you really truly believe that his pol- politics and his policy and demeanor and all that shit, if that's for you and you don't vote for him, you're the fucking problem. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. I would rather you didn't vote, but, like, it irritates me that people get to, like, bitch when they don't at least take part. Like, if you want to prevent Hillary, or you want to prevent Trump, vote against them. That's the way to do it. I don't know. It just it irritates me. Anyways. I'm, I'm still stuck on the secession thing. I'm telling you guys, you can have Disney World, and we'll have industry and a sustainable country. It's a good trade-off, okay? <laughs> the Austrian asked Hugo, uh, there was a time mark here, you'll understand in a second, if the class is optional like people chose to take it of, of their own free will, what's the problem? This was in regards to, um, there was a religious class in a school, um, and we referred that person um, to the FFRF, and actually I believe they got into contact with them, if I remember correctly, which was, was good. Um, but the problem was that they were putting um, religious art and shit in the hallways, and it took place during school time, and it was rented out to the uh, the class. Right. Uh, the actual issue with this is, based on case law and various stuff that's happened through the legal system, you can't be supporting a specific religion in school. And it'd be one thing, again, we talked about this in the, la- in the last episode, if it's a world religions class and you're just talking about things in a secular manner, that's fine. You can learn about religions. But when it gets to the point where it's like actively teaching children this religion is correct follow this religion that's Mm. where it crosses the line into illegal um because uh we've determined in this country you can either support every religion equally in a public institution or you have to not at all um so that's why it's an issue you can't promote christianity and not also say well okay we'll also allow you to study islam or hinduism or sikhism or what however you say it you know that's the issue. It's that it's being preferential to one religion, and it's being funded by tax dollars. That's the issue. I don't care what people actually do. I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you want to, in your own time, do Christian things and teach kids Christianity in Sunday school. Or even, um, this was a thing, when I was in elementary school, we had a thing where the local uh, religious school, this is actually funny because I went to a religious school, I've talked about it before, a Baptist school, And they're very, very religious. Like, girls can't wear pants. They have to wear skirts religious. So I left there eventually. And then, like, in fifth grade, I went to a public school, started going to a public school. But then the public school offered a class on, I think, Thursdays or Fridays where they would bus you to the Baptist school and uh, they would do, like, a Sunday school lesson. Now, 
this technically wasn't illegal because the school didn't pay for it. It was offered by the Baptist school and you had your parents had to pay specifically for you to do that. Now, the fact that the public school allowed you to be pulled out of class for that, eh, that's iffy in the first place. But because it wasn't funded by the school itself, it's technically legal. And I don't really have a problem with it, although eh, you probably shouldn't let kids skip stuff for that. You should probably make them do it after school. But I don't know. Separate issues. It's about funding, uh, when it takes place where it takes place, stuff like that, and how it's framing the religious, uh, the religion that you're talking about. Well said, presidential candidate Hugo. Ryan Averitt says, Dear Hugo, I'm 17. Ah, missed the cutoff. We'll wait for you, Ryan. We'll wait for you. And I'll be starting college next fall. I live in a very religious household, but my parents insist on me attending church every week. My parents have offered to pay for my entire college and living expenses while in college, but they won't pay for it unless I continue to attend church weekly throughout college. My question is, should I just bite the bullet for another four years and keep going to church for free college, or should I do what I want to do by not attending church and bite the bullet of student debt? Thanks. You guys are awesome. You go you go to church. Go to church. Please go to church. I'm telling Fuck you, yeah. student debt. I'm still... I didn't even finish college still paying off my student debt years later. Please, I'm telling you, an hour or two a week at church, you don't have to, you don't have to pay attention. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to like it. But I'm telling you, a free ride just for that, I would jump on that. I'm telling you. I mean, it sucks. I get it. It's kind of bullshit. No, Your I'd go, are making I'd go today. But uh, yeah, totally. Your parents want to fund me. I'll go to church. <laughs> right, but, that's uh, what I'm saying. Like, fuck yeah. Uh, this, also, you're 17, so you're probably like newly atheist, meaning you have that rage boner going on right now. That'll pass. Okay, so just especially, it seems like you're staying at home because I don't know how they would make sure that you go to church with them and still play for college. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, do it. And then you can always make excuses every once in a while. It's not like they're gonna. Stop paying your bills because you're like, oh, I got to study. You know what I mean? But I think if you make an effort and go, you, you'll get four years of fucking college paid for? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Take please, that. Please. I'm telling you, you will look, if you make that decision, you will look back years later in whatever career you decide to go into or if you're flipping burgers because the job market's still shit, you'd still be like, wow, I, I got a really good deal there. Oh, it, fuck it. It's, please, just. Right. I'm telling you. As someone who hates church, and even when I was Christian, didn't like going because it's boring and a little pandery, especially for the age a I was. A little I pandery. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, yeah. It's worth it for that. Please do that. You're you're very lucky. I mean, yeah, you'd be luckier if you had parents who apparently have the money to fund it anyway, if they just let you do what you want, <laughs> wanted to do within reason. There's uh, no situation but, here where you shouldn't take this deal. Yes. I Unless cannot. it's like they're making you sacrifice babies and it's like a much weirder church than I assume it is. No, you go. You yeah. go. It isn't a religious college, right? Like, if it's liberty, then eh. <laughs> Seriously, I know, I know. Your people are probably. Why are they spending so much time in this question? A simple yes would have. Because I want to make sure Ryan fucking Ryan, takes the deal. Ryan, take the deal. Take the deal. We'll wait for you still, though. Josh Head, dear Bible Reloaded. If Harold Penisman, Harold is spelled wrong. H a r o l d. Like fuck is he's not heralding. He's not an angel. Harold Penisman and Hillary are running for president. Who would you vote for? Also, would the answer change if you changed Hillary to Donald Trump and added zombie Richard Nixon? I would vote for Harold Penisman. I, this question actually made me think, that's not too far off from the situation we actually have right now, if I'm being real with you. Well, she's not authoritarian left. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I think Donald Trump is almost like a real-life version of Harold Penisman. No, Harold Penisman, though, is like super far left. The point but, was, like, you have to be, you have to be gay and divorced, and, like, really super liberal. This is like if the craziest SJW ever won. <laughs> that's, that's what Harold Penisman is in the, in the comic, and also he likes free drugs. I um, see. I think some of, some of Donald Trump, though, that weird rage, the bombastic... Oh, yeah. uh, that, if, you, if you melded Donald Trump with a super crazy far-left, like authoritarian liberal 
then you'd have Harold Penisman. Yeah. And sure, I'll vote for Harold Penisman. There are weirder things this election. At least Harold Penisman, I'll get free drugs. That's what I'm saying. And free guns and whatever the heck else they were doing. Just other freedoms. You get some freedoms that you have. Yeah. And then you get put into detention centers if you go to church or... Which isn't a problem for me, so... Or just have a moderate position on anything, really. (laughs) So we're fucked, still. We're still fucked. Eh, the free drugs will be fun for a while, though. So. Right. Brendan Thompson, what kind of beer do you prefer? Yeah, Hugo, what kind of beer do you prefer? I actually got this one because I knew you'd have a better answer. I don't drink beer. If I do, it's like a, it's like an ale, like a cider type deal. Uh, like something yeah, ciders for- are gateway beers. You could move yep. into a blue moon with a nice orange slice on it. Right. And I think that over time you would come to enjoy a beer. Oh, probably. Um, but for I- me, it was for me it was I I didn't like beer until I was probably twenty three. But that is because in high school, uh, we played beer pong a lot, and I threw up Bush Light and Miller Light so many times, I can't even, like, it was just gross to me after, like, senior year in high school. So I just never drank. So, do you want me to answer the question, though, seriously? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm curious, because okay. I don't know about beer. Okay. So my, my favorite types of beers are Amber Ales, um, which is more of a, hoppy means bitter, usually, because they have put more hops. Malt tends to be, um, uh, it's different, more like a wheat beer, um, which is brighter, tastes brighter and uh, less bitter. Um, so Mac and Jack's Amber Ale is my favorite right now. Uh, I always like a, a an Oktoberfest from Sam Adams. I also always like a Boston Lager from Sam Adams. But the best beer on planet Earth comes from the best brewery in America, and that's Founders Brewery in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, which is weird because Michigan sucks for most everything else except beer. Holy shit. And I'm not kidding. They've, they've won several times best brewery in the U.S. Um, if you have a chance to buy fi- Founders in your area, I would do so. No beer that you could get is bad. Like, Hugo, you would like their Raspberry Rubeau. Um, Maybe. which is, is basically just a, um, it's a raspberry malt beverage. So it tastes kind of, it's much sweeter. It's almost a cider, but not quite. Um, man, their, uh, their breakfast stout is delicious. Um, their, their, oh, I think it's dirty bastard there, uh, which is a, a, wi- a whiskey ale. Um, it's aged in, <laughs> it's beer that they age in whiskey barrels. It's fucking delicious. Um, actually it's a bourbon ale and then, uh, man, there's just so much, but, uh, I don't drink a ton. I'll, I'm usually good for a beer or two, three or four times a week. Um, I don't really like to get drunk. Um, uh, my parents were, they drink too much. So it just always, it always puts me off. I don't like drunk people. Yeah, I was, uh, I normally now I just do vodka cause it's the lowest calorie per alcohol volume I could find. And I'm trying to lose weight right now. Get skinny Uh-oh. girl. No. Faggot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and i i don't drink as much uh now either um which you can see uh, a couple days ago we did that uh thing the promo with ray comfort and i was yeah. hammered which yeah, it uh, wasn't a good look no a lot of people liked it though whatever they thought i get why they thought it was funny it was kind of funny but <laughs> yeah. ugh, i don't like being sloppy drunk it's uh yeah you couldn't talk it was not a good feeling it was frustrating yeah, I don't You're like garbage. not being able to articulate myself correctly. It's uh, it's frustrating. You know that drunk when uh, you don't get this. I one time I saw you super drunk at your birthday. One time, yeah, I yeah. was very that was drunk. Bad. That was Everyone very bad. was giving me shots though, and I was like, all right. I had literally about twenty five shots that night, and that Oof. was dangerous. But yeah, I- but you know when you when you uh, are that drunk and you're like trying to say words, but you can't. Like your mouth oh, yeah. won't do what you what you want. That's frustrating. I hate it. That's but. that's the drunkest I've ever been by far. And I puked, and everyone sang a happy birthday to me uh, while I was puking. That was good. Good times. Uh, Fuck oof. you, Richie. I don't know if Richie's watching this episode, but Richie brought a pint of a hundred proof like Aero brand peppermint schnapps. Oh no! And I did like five shots of that with him, and that was what sent me over the edge. Uh, and I can't, I don't even like the smell of peppermint to this day (laughs) because just pepper, like a mint. I just can't do it. It was all his fault. Shit. That was like, what was that? 24? That was, that was a while ago. Maybe 23. It was a long time ago. 
Yeah. That, no, that, I wasn't even drinking age at that point. No, I know you weren't. That's why so, I'm saying. It was like 24, 24 at most. Um, I think you were. Were you 22? No, I wasn't 22. No, I wasn't 22. I think it might have been 23. I'm basing this off relationships I was in at the time. Yeah. That's uh, and this was an in-between area. And then that, that day, the ex, the most recent ex, had called the cops. Oh, that yeah, night. that was such a dick move. Like, what the hell, man? Right, we weren't even talking. No. I don't know. She was a bitch. Anyway, she got knocked up, ruined her life. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> We're bad people. She still lives with her parents. Mm. I think. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. I have an ex, too, who still lives with her parents, and she's two years older than me. Bear in yeah, mind... Yeah, but is it because she got knocked up? No. She just no. has a weird relationship with her parents, where she just... Yeah, she's a weirdo. Yeah, she was a weirdo. Whatever. It is what it is. I'm a war music. Uh, hi, Hugo and Jake. I just recently discovered your channel and am quickly becoming a fan. My question is, what do you see the future being like for atheism in America in general? Do you think that it will become more popular as time goes on? Do you think Christianity will for some reason grow instead? Or do you think the amount of Christian slash religious people and the amount of atheists will remain basically the same? I would love to know your thoughts on this. Thanks. Welcome to the SS Mediocrity. I am... I'm a war music. Toot toot! Are you proud of yourself when you say things? I don't... It's our boat horn. Okay, anyway. So, this is an interesting question. Um, I see basically what is going to happen, in my opinion, is... More people will become atheist. You see this in the demographics. Younger people have a higher likelihood of being atheist or non-religious, or at the very least, they consider themselves spiritual but not religious. So I, f I see that expanding. And I see the people who are religious being more extreme in how religious they are. So more evangelicals, more, more Baptists, more stuff like that. And that'll be interesting because everything in this country seems like it's going to extremes, whether it be... Uh, 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 political partisanship, um, in income inequality between the very rich and the very poor, the middle class is starting to disappear, the people who are religious and non-religious. It's weird. I don't know why this is happening, although part of it's probably the internet and our, all of us have our own little safe space bubbles now, whether we like to admit it or not. So that probably plays a part and people are less willing to compromise than they used to be, but that's pretty much what I see. More atheists, uh, the people who are religious, more extreme because of the access to information and stuff, it's harder to be just moderate. Well, okay, maybe this stuff is true. Uh, I don't know. You'd think, like, intuitively, you'd think that it would be more easy to be moderate. But really what people do is they seek out echo chambers, and it's more readily available because people are afraid uh, to challenge themselves and their beliefs, and whether it's political or religious or fucking what kind of food you like who, who cares there's always someone arguing with someone else about something benign like on my twitter feed today literally they were talking about and arguing about the differences between packaged cornstarch whether it was <laughs> bagged or canned and i made a joke about it not being the great depression and so they come in cans now i don't know that to be true i just made a joke and that, and then there became a like a in 1945, they switched over, and I was like, I don't give a fuck, it was a joke! I don't understand how you can make... How can you take a stand on cornstarch so hard? Uh, it's it's so strange how the access to almost unlimited information has changed the social discourse. It's so weird. It's you know what, though? I do think that we're cresting and coming out the other side because you see more people getting tired of it. And you see more people, not just our channel, but like uh, Philip DeFranco or Matt Jarbo or Kyle Kalinske, for example. People are just starting to cut through the bullshit and they're like, you know what? Both sides are fucking stupid of whatever argument it happens to be. And it's just, and, and people are like, no, let's take a reasonable fucking approach. And these, these kind of, this reason is, is starting to take hold because now we're starting to get used to social media and everyone having a pedestal and everyone having a voice. It, it We're starting to become jaded to the fact that we have a voice. And yeah. so we're, we're not so willing to start being assholes. I think it's like, I think in a decade, like, or eight years from now, the next presidential election, assuming the incumbent wins, which is usually the case, I, I feel like it's going to be, it'll still be, like 
acidic in, in areas, of course, but I feel like we're going to be able to have a much better conversation. Because right now it's just button heads. And this is, you know, the Republican Party stonewalling Obama for six years. Like, it's that kind of shit. Yeah, I can't even imagine how bad the uh, the the congressional not working thing is going to go. Assuming Hillary wins, she's the polls are tightening, but I still think electorally speaking, if you look at the map, she has a much higher chance of winning. Yeah. But uh, if that happens, oh man, we're going to get a do nothing Congress again for four to eight years. You know, I don't think garbage. so. I think you the know? Republican Party after the Trump shit dies down, because a lot of them are scared of his supporters. Um, not just the base, not vote wise, but I mean, there's some violent fucking people there yeah. and you can, again, you can argue that there's violent people on the left, which there are, I would never argue against that, but I think the Trump supporter tends to be the louder gun toting variety and the, the person on the left that kills people is like the serial killer. You know what I mean? So they don't, they're <laughs> okay. not really loud. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it, it, it would strike fear into people to be like, nah, fuck Trump. If you're in that base, because it feels like a betrayal of sorts. So I feel like once that calms down, you're going to have this sort of renouncement of this far rightness. You're going to, it's it's going to move into this sort of, we've lost every fucking election since Bush. We have to fucking move forward. Because after they lost, after Mitt lost, they had gone through and said, okay, we need to stop being so extreme. We need to stop doing this. We need to stop banking on the religious stuff and start talking about our economics and our plans because we believe that these are correct. And I disagree with that, but I, I think that the principle is there and, and, and could be set into place easily. All that is is a culture change, and all that means is people getting voted out, which it seems like is going to happen. It's going to be interesting because, well, I think the establishment is on board with changing and evolving and because they need to court, especially younger voters. I mean, there are obviously young The Republican Trump establishment, you mean. Right. Yes, the Republican establishment. But the base themselves, <laughs> the people that the Republican Party has been courting for 40 years with the Southern strategy and stuff like that, they are unwilling to change. And once the Republican establishment starts, maybe next election or however long it takes, two years from now, trying to separate themselves from Trumpism or whatever you want to call it, I think the base is not going to be happy because they still they like the Trump is popular. People like Trump on the right, the, at least the right. not the not the establishment, but you know the the people with lawn signs, the people who actually yeah, go out and but vote. We, they like him, whether you agree I, or not with Trump. No, he's I, popular. I, I know, but when I look at this, I look at the McCarthy shit. It was a very similar cultural zeitgeist sort of quick shift to the right, and then when that shit got exposed and it he lost and it. Like, he ends up going on, on camera drunk and just totally fucks it up. I mean, drunk, Trump has done similar things, and if he loses the election, it's pretty much the nail in the coffin for that, you know, his behavior. Um, it, it suddenly, like, everyone, like, comes to, like, they've been in a dream and are like, wait, what the fuck? No, 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 well, let's stop. And then you get, like, you can call it the golden age of, of conservatism, like, you get the Reagans and stuff like that, which I think, all things considered... Uh, at least they were they were, they had some sort of dignity to it. You know what I mean? Like okay. like Reagan had had principles that he would stand up to, and he was more liberal than some liberals are today. So it's it's just one of those things where what you 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 go through these ebbs and flows, and sometimes you go extreme. Like Bernie would have been the other extreme because I think he's he's much more liberal than the average person is. But we would have had these two. We would have had these two like opposites it would have been super weird i think bernie would have run away with it just because he's not as uh dis unlikable as hillary is but you know uh, but uh, i don't know well we'll see what happens you're more optimistic than i am but it'll be interesting i'm to optimistic see, because sure. i'm looking at it through what i know about history and this happens all the time we've done this before it's not new I it's know, just it's but... just it's just in the information age that we're seeing this and everyone's freaking out because they don't use the information age to go read a wikipedia page about <laughs> mccarthyism or something Anyways, moving on. Yeah, that, that that discussion got way out of hand. That had nothing to do with the question. The election, um, the election's less than a week away. It's on my mind. So, Boxfish asks, "Why aren't your videos showing up in my subscription feed?" Good question. This is a very deep running YouTube problem. Um, Hugo, tell the man how to fix it, or girl, I guess. Boxfish. Yeah, next know. to the little subscribe thing, I'll show a little brief picture of it. There's a little thing you can click that'll add notifications. So anytime 
we put out a video, you'll be notified. It'll be in your subscription feed, and you'll get, like, an email or something. And you can do this for all of the channels that you like. But for some reason, YouTube, in its infinite wisdom, has decided, well, I know you hit subscribe, but, like, do you really want to see their videos? Every time they put in a video. <laughs> so they'll start removing them from if you like miss a couple videos or whatever. They'll stop putting it in your subscription feed, even though you hit the subscribe button, which means you want to see them there. Or it'll be buried. Right. Which is hilarious because like, for instance, Red Letter Media. I love Red Letter Media. They're hilarious. But sometimes mm -hmm. I don't have time to watch like Best of the Worst because it's an hour long video. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll watch that later. So I don't watch it right away. And in the meantime, right. maybe they'll put out some other videos. So then... Maybe they stopped showing me them in my subscription feed because I didn't watch every single video every time they came out. I don't know. what. No one who works at YouTube uses YouTube. It I'm, seems that I'm way. I'm so sure at this point. It's here's so a couple. Weird. Here's a couple tips to make sure that you see not just our videos, but any creator videos that you want to make sure that you see. Of course, check your subscription feed, whether it's on mobile um, or on desktop. I like the YouTube app personally. I think it works really well. Um, so like Hugo said, definitely press, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button, click that bell. It'll give you notifications and you'll see these comments every once in a while called notification squad. Those are those people that turn this on and they're usually the ones that get the first comment. So if you're, if that's important to you to someday get the first comment, show up on Wednesdays, uh, and Fridays at 8 AM Eastern time. And maybe you can be that, but, uh, <laughs> um, if you want to, like Hugo said, for instance, that some like Red Letter Media comes up and Best of the Worst is an hour long, and he wants to watch that later, there is a button that will put that into a Watch Later playlist, and it's right on there. It's the little clock in the bottom right when you're looking at all the tiles. Uh, just click that. It'll send it to your Watch Later playlist, and then just go visit your Watch Later playlist later, and when you watch it, it gets removed from the list. Easy enough. Yeah. Um, also, some other stuff you could do is go into your subscription feed and maybe get rid of people you haven't been watching a lot of. Because the way the algorithm works is it'll shove people to the top if, you haven't, if you've been dormant on another channel. For instance, a lot of people binge us, which I totally get because we're a pretty serial um, situation. But uh, if you don't watch us for, like, say, three weeks because you want to watch six episodes in a row... Um, it will be buried down your subscription feed and you'll have to seek us out. Um, so if you get rid of the other people that would bury us on that feed, if you're assuming you're not actually watching them, please don't just unsubscribe from people just for us. It's not like a fucking coup. I think, uh, there's plenty to go around. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's some, some accounts that don't post anymore that I think we unsubscribe from every once in a while. Hugo and I share a subscription feed, of course, because we use the same account, but, yeah. um, yeah, those those would all work. And also, um, following us on social media is your backup backup plan because we post every video on Facebook, uh, Patreon if you're into that, uh, and Twitter. So yeah, always so all the social media and stuff. I've been That's why we give Facebook. the spiel at the end. You are bad. bad at Facebook. Yeah. I'm too good at Twitter. So I mean, there's a <laughs> uh, but uh, Patreon's right in the middle because it posts everything anyways. Yeah, there you go. Guernsey Biscuit asks, Dear Hugo slash Jake, what do you think about lying to children about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and whatever, I guess, but seriously, what child really gives a fuck about those? On the one hand, lying to children doesn't seem to be in the interest of the greater good most of the time, as it distorts their worldview and may alter how they look at the world in the future. However, it is indeed a pleasurable lie to believe in while it lasts, and may also teach children a lesson about skepticism regarding authority. P.S. I've been watching you guys uh, since the beginning. I still can't tell which of you is Hugo and Jake. I may need some sort of professional help. Um, or you're a blind and deaf person, in which case I'm very impressed that you know any information at all. Like you mentioned, I think there are basically, from an atheist perspective, two schools of thought on this. Uh, the mm. first being, you shouldn't lie to your kid, it's wrong, and it's similar to religion in that you're just teaching them to believe in fake stuff, so that's not healthy for them. Or two, it's an exercise in skepticism, like you mentioned. I really don't know. I don't have kids, nor am I ever going to have kids, so I don't particularly have, like, a, a horse in this race as far as I have a strong opinion one way or another. But it really depends on what you want to do. If you don't feel comfortable lying to your kids and you think that teaching them about Santa as if it's a reality um, might be detrimental to their view of the world, that's one thing. But at the same time, no matter what, at some point they're going to figure out Santa is an impossibility. It doesn't really make sense in the real world, and that can be a useful teaching moment. It really can. You can say, okay, now, 
as they start to maybe ask questions about Santa, don't just say, Santa's not real, but you can be like, if they're like, um, how does Santa go to every house in one night? You can be like, well, how do you think Santa goes to every house in one night? Whatever. And as they get older, the questions will probably get more complicated <laughs> until eventually they realize, you know what, I don't think Santa's real. And that can be a healthy thing because it's a good way to teach kids that your worldview is going to change. There are going to be moments in your life where you're going to learn new information that are going to fundamentally change how you view the world, and you need to be prepared for that and deal with it in a healthy way. So, if I did have kids, I'd probably go that route, but that's just me, but it's never happening, so it doesn't matter. But, really, it's whatever you want to do. They're your kids. It's, it, it is a tough, tough situation. I understand. But I think the benefits outweigh the risk of, you know, having them believe in magic for a couple of years, you know? They're kids anyway. They're going to believe dumb stuff no matter what. You kind of touched on it. You kind of, you started out with the, well, there's two schools of thought, but really there's three. So you kind of went two and a half. Um, okay. So there's, yes, Santa exists. No, Santa doesn't exist. And the third, and what I think is the most effective, is the neutral position of, I don't know. What do you think? Which you kind of touched on, sure. but starting there, not mm-hmm. ending there. So what you do is they're going to go to school. You maybe never bring it up. And then they, they talk to other kids and they do talk. Uh, they'll come home with, um, you know, they were talking about Santa Claus. Um, what is that? And ask them what they know about it. And they'll give you the basic properties of a Santa Claus because I'm sure they were curious enough to ask in class. And then you can go, well, do you believe that that's something? Uh, it could be. It might not be. What do you think? And they'll figure it out. Kids are smarter than they uh, exhibit. <laughs> um, like, they, they, they can't sit down with a problem like we think, but uh, they can certainly make out for themselves what is reality. And so, um, for instance, um, the uh, oldest here... Uh, <laughs> girlfriend had to warn his teacher recently that he's probably going to be the kid that spoils that right so uh just forewarning and the teacher laughed and said there's always at least two or three that do that so it's my it's whatever. Uh, i i think i've told this story before my teacher is the one who spoiled it for me mm. <laughs> you a religious is... teacher yeah but i don't because wasn't... you were in a really religious thing though weren't you and yeah they, it... did they pr- not promote that because some don't i don't I guess I don't know what the intention was. It didn't seem, at least, again, you're looking from a young kid perspective, so I really couldn't judge why they were saying this. But to me, at least at the time, it seemed like they just weren't thinking about what they were saying or something. You know what I mean? Which I'm sure happens. As I don't, I'm not normal. But in fairness, they're normally around kids. They should know. If I were around a kid and let it slip accidentally, I'd feel bad. But I'm also not around kids. I'm not used to people believing in Santa around me, so I don't feel the need to censor that information. <laughs> but, um... I remember her being like, uh, Santa isn't real or something. No, because see, if she did say, that's, no, she probably did it maliciously. Maybe it was a little bit like, nah, dude, Christmas is, I never, I haven't thought about it that much in the years. But honestly, yeah, it might have been, they didn't think Santa should be a thing you do on Christmas or something. That's funny. But there were other kids in the class, I know, who also believed in Santa. So it wasn't like a direct position, I don't think. I think maybe we were just getting to an age where... What was that? Was that second grade? What age, what age do kids normally stop believing in Santa? I don't know. I don't. I just I believed in him until I was like six or seven. Okay, how old are kids in second grade? Because maybe I was just a late seven. Uh, I was probably a little late. That might be why. Maybe she was just like, ah, fuck it. He's old enough. I don't know. Either well, way, the, I mean, it just depends on the household and the community and stuff. Oh yeah, I know. Like rural areas tend to believe that shit for longer. But I mean, you were already religious anyway, so it, it's not really a big leap. <laughs> That's fair. That's true. You're not wrong. Anyway, I think that's the last question. So yep. you can always ask us more, or not us, me. I mean, he's allowed to come along and answer some questions when I let him, but this is my show. Uh, ask more in the comments. We got a lot last time. Sorry if I didn't get to yours. And if you feel like it's a good question, feel free to ask it again, because I'm not going to go back two episodes and look at it. Amazing. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> you can always... Subscribe over at our other channels, The Quran Reloaded for Islam-related videos. We just did a really good one where we looked at an Egyptian children's show that teaches kids to hate Jews. So <laughs> please check that video out. It's very funny and pretty disheartening. You can also follow us over at Unpopular Culture, which is our channel where we do sort of a weekly look back on the week of movie news, television news, video game news, all media. Oh, That's man. pretty fun. We're I love a- doing that show, by the way, especially since we've uh, kind of moved it just to a conversational 
thing. Uh, man, I'm really looking forward to. We're gonna review. Um, um, Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange is coming out this week. Uh, Hugo's seeing it tonight. I'm seeing it Friday. Well, so I guess you know. However, you're seeing this time, but w- as of this recording tonight and Friday, um, and then so not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, giving everybody about a week and a couple days to watch it, we'll be doing our review live uh, on Unpop, where you guys can uh, talk with us about it. It's a lot of fun. I really love doing that. We've done Stranger Things. Uh, we just did Black Mirror before that, or r- just before this one. Um, and moving forward, I think uh, what else comes out? We'll probably do we'll do a Rogue One as oh, well. Oh, for sure. Sure. Because I mean, so we do all the big movies uh, and big series on Netflix. We did um, um, Luke we Cage the, as well. Yeah, we we'll do, do Marvel. We'll do Daredevil. We'll do Iron Fist. All those. Yeah, and uh, that's almost up to twenty thousand subscribers now. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. We got a little bit. Of, we mentioned it in the Ray Comfort video, so it got a little bit of a bump, which is cool. cool. And hopefully, this will too. Please join us over there if, if any if any of the things behind me right now interest you. <laughs> then you'll probably like that channel. Oh so, yeah. Including For sure. myself. Like, you obviously. see the shirts we wear. This is my Mega Man shirt. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know where the camera's at right now. But there it is. You see it? I can't. <laughs> anyway, so thanks everyone. You can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You can also subscribe to the channel uh, and get more of these things. I just did my Jake Reads. It was fun. I don't know what we're doing next week. Oh, we're doing uh, the second half of the Ray Comfort video on Wednesday. Yes. So if you're not, one. I don't know how you get here if you're not subscribed to this channel. We don't get a lot of carryover on these, do we? These are more for fans, anyways. Yeah. Whatever. You should subscribe again. Make another account. <laughs> you can. Uh, you can always donate to our Patreon campaign if you want to help support the show. And now we're doing sort of a uh, grab bag every month for the Patreon people and. Depending on the level, you get different stuff. At five dollars, you get assigned chick tracked by us. At ten dollars, you get pins and stickers. And fifteen, you get. 3D pop paper figures that you can fold up and they're really cool. And of course, the higher levels get all the lower level stuff below them also. So just call it a loot crate. Why do you call it a grab bag? It's, it's not a, candy. It's a loot crate with a K. It's a trade. I think that's trademarked, but okay. It's not if we say it with a K. Okay. Can I open a McDonald's but with like a silent P or something? You can open a McDonald. <laughs> it's one. It's not all possessive. Right. So, thanks everyone. Until next time, I'm Hugo. Jake. This is Ben Ask Hugo number 34. Consecutive numbers really do it for me.